For close to four decades, Matthew Ojaya has been in the forefront of evangelism and revival in Nigeria. Known as a pastor to pastors, his ministry has raised many ministers who are in turn today imparting thousands. Tonight, Matthew shares with me his burden for the church, as well as a call to revival. This is Chainstock Africa. From Cape Town to Cairo and from Magadishu to Dakar, this is Chim's Talk Africa. And now here's your host, Chim Onyibilanma. Welcome there viewers to this segment of your show. Like I said in today's intro, I have the pleasure of having with me again Evangelist Machio Ojaye, who is the leader of the uh, Food for the Total Man Ministries in Northern Nigeria. We had him here before a while back, and today I've asked him over because I want to discuss one thing that seems to be his, uh, a, a kind of steady passion for him, which is the state of the church. You're welcome, uh, you. uh, Evangelist Matthew, to Thank the you, program. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming once again. You, you were writing recently a lot, uh, not just recently. I've known you for uh, one who continually writes and talks about the bride of Christ. You seem to have a passion to see the body of Christ be all that she's supposed to be. When you look at the church just around Nigeria and, of course, across Africa, what do you see to be the state of the church? Well, I see a vibrant church in the sense that, like the Anglican church, they've caught fire. People used to call them just orthodox, but they're on fire for God. Even Caribbean and Seraphim. Which is, uh, this is a syncretic syn- syn- uh, which is more like what we call ZCC in South Africa. And they've been inviting us to preach. They're, you turning, do, they're turning to the Lord. Yeah, you do Holy Ghost baptism, you do deliverance, born again, inside their church. And the Baptists are very good in evangelism. Every church must open another church. And when they can stand on their own, you go and open another one, they to go and open another one. So we see that it's spread. So God is actually doing something. Yes. In the midst it's, of, it gets in the midst to a stage where nearly in every street there's a church. Across the country. Across the country. There are some places where you see six churches on a building, which is wrong anyway. Mm. Because first bar will never open six branches <laughs> on one building. You're very right but, in that analogy. But we, like that, we are moving on. The villages are moving on. So we can see that the, the, the spread of the gospel. The gospel is going in yes. places never And then there are to. TV stations mm. where people are preaching. Mm. So that if they cannot hear the gospel somewhere else, in the office they, they will hear. Mm. At home, in their bedroom, mm. they could also listen to mm. the gospel. Mm. So that they can bypass other obstacles and hear the gospel. Mm. This is going on in Nigeria. But of course, you, 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 you said in what you wrote, you talked about the fact that uh, despite all these great things God is doing, there are some things that give you concern. And one of the first things you pointed out is the, is the issue of leadership. Can you explain what you mean by well, that? You see, we have Islam in Africa. Coordinated the whole of Africa. We don't have Christianity in West Africa. You mean like the uh, leaders our, of the, our talking to each other? To our yes, thoughts. all the churches, the leaders in all the nations of West Africa, to even meet, coordinate, network, and also resist what Islam is trying to do. But we, we've always been divided. Yes, even inside we are divided. Everybody is building his own empire. And that's not it. That's not what God wants. Now look, in Khan, people misunderstood Khan. And Khan is a Christian association of, of Nigeria, Nigeria, which is the... Umbrella body. Uh, umbrella body of all Christians in Nigeria. But they have a problem. They are not allowed to interfere on what you preach or you do in your church. It's just to gather together to meet with the government or to face outside aggression. So God cannot tell you your doctrine is wrong. Mm. So that becomes a problem. Mm. In the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, 
which is uh, the, the Omera body of Pentecostal Pastor churches Church. in Nigeria, okay? You don't have to register with them to function. You just register with Corporate Affairs Commission. So even if you're a Pentecostal, yes. you don't, you're not obliged to, to be join, a member yes. of that. So you it's can't, choice. they can't discipline you. Nobody can discipline you. Yeah, but what if you're the member? They, if they do that, you cut out of them and still continue. Now, uh, you, you bring me to a point, because you're part of the PFM. Yes. You're part of the old, you're part of the foundation of PFM in Nigeria. And people seem to think that when it comes to the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, uh, there's a lot of disorder, if you like. In recent times, there have been scandals of church leaders. And there doesn't seem to be a clear message coming from the leaders of the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, such as at least to make it clear that this is not right, or even some form of sanction. Even if it means saying to the person, you can't be part of our fellowship anymore if you don't change this. What do you say to that? You see, they ought to do it. And the present president, Reverend Omogude, when he took over, he was determined to move. But I'm sure he made roadblocks. And when you meet roadblocks, you have to become wise as far as the people are concerned. So but, we're playing politics in yeah, that sense. But the nation, the church must have a prophet. Mm. There must be somebody that will look at that, will not look at anybody and just say what God is saying and rebuke what is evil. Mm. We don't have it. Mm. Paul had to face Peter. You were eating with us. Now, because some Jews came, you wash your hand and do something. No, you are pretending. We don't have that. And we should be able to call each other to order. That's why you have the kidney. That's why you have the liver. To remove poison. Mm. Mm. So we must have such mm. people mm. that we rebuke. Mm. Mm. You see? Speak out. Yes, don't share the mm. law. This is mm. wrong. Mm. Mm. But when we don't have it, and it's like a time in Israel when there was no king. Everybody did what they liked. It ought not to be so in the church. Like now, how many people speak to government? How many people rebuke government for doing what they are doing? If we keep quiet because we are looking for survivor, that's not Christianity. Mm. The Lord Jesus said, what I speak to you in secret, what did he say? Say it openly. Shut it out the house top. Yeah. Raise up your voice like a trumpet. And rebuild the evil in the land. The church failed. And this is one of the things you've been doing in recent times. Yeah, you, the church failed. You, you have been, lot, but the church failed. Uh, you have been raising your voice. So they think that this is a madman living. <laughs> so now that they think it's a madman living, that gives me freedom to say anything I want. And you said the last time you were on this show that you want to be remembered as a, a madman. As a madman. A madman for Jesus. Who kept speaking for Jesus. Yes. Uh, tell me, you talked about uh, the fact that the issue of doctrine in the church has been one of your concerns. You called it the unruly, uncoordinated, uncoordinated doctrinal issues. Yes. Can you explain what concern you have about that? Well, what we mean is this. You see, the Holy Spirit can say, slap somebody mm. and he will get healed. Make sure it's the Holy Spirit that said it. And it cannot become a formula that you go around slapping everybody. The Lord Jesus did not use the same method for healing. Like now, we talk about seed faith. We preach it in error. It was not Peter that came to Jesus and said, take my boat and multiply fish. They say, what you give God is what God multiplied to you. No. He gave Jesus his boat. How many boats did Jesus give Peter? Peter didn't need more boat. So Peter met the need of Jesus. Jesus met the need of Peter. There was no bargaining. And nobody else came to Jesus and said, take my boat and give me fish. No. Elijah and the woman of Zarepa. It was not the woman that said, I give you my last meal, you give me. Mm. No, it was the Lord that sent him yeah. to her. And Elijah did not go around all the other widows. And said, this is nice. And I have anointing mm. to collect your last meal mm. and then give you, mm. give you. The same thing with Naaman. Mm. It was not Naaman that said, I'll bathe in your river, you heal me. Mm. And all the lepers in Israel, Elisha did not go around. So go to say, I have anointing to send you to river Jordan. Yeah. So we've turned it. And we are making money with it. We are selling oil. Mm. I've asked them, 
Every two, two months, every one month, you are doing anointing service. Did the anointing of last month, did they expire? And where did we even get that from? This it's not in the Bible. The f- Look, there is anointing for the sick. There is anointing for consecration. But not one single place in the Bible where they gather every believer and anointed them. Mm. It's not in the Bible. And yet we've created it. We've created it. The anointing services. Now, firstborn redemption. Who told you that you are a firstborn, you have advantage? David was the lastborn. Mm. So, by our doctrine, David should be nothing. Mm. There's nothing like that. All of us are children of Jesus. And we create these doctrines, we teach them, they become part of the system. Yes. So much that nobody stops and says, what does uh, the Bible did, say? Where did you get this? Mm. Like now, first fruit. Mm. Was it more than a basket mm. of the fruits from your farm? Mm. It's basket food. But now you want to collect one month's salary and say it's first fruit. Hmm. No. It's not in the Bible. Where did we get that even? You know, we, want, we are looking for ways of getting money. Hmm. So we, we keep inventing new yeah, things. Because the church is, the members is to be stingy. So we manipulate. And nobody can say, hey, that's an error. And that's you see, we ought to have a group in Nigeria hmm. that everything you preach, they should watch it. When you finish, they call you and say, come and defend what you preach. But I believe that should be what every believer should learn, yes. sir. What, what I've emphasized on this show and what I want to say again, every believer needs to learn that we are called to be like Berean, To be like the Berean Berean Christians, Christians. Who went to search the it scriptures. It doesn't matter whether you're one year in the Lord yes. or one whole Let century. Let the Bible have a final Yes. Story. So that you know, even what we are saying on this show, yes. you should take it and say, where is that in the Bible? Mm-hmm. It must become our way of life. Yes. That's the Christian life. Please go on. When we go for Bible study, mm. we didn't come to hear your opinion. Mm. We want to hear, what did the king say? And Mary said, whatever he says unto you, do it. We don't question God. So you don't go to church and be giving your opinion. We don't want to know your opinion. What did the king say? Yeah. You know what we're going to do? We're going to take a break now, sir. And when we come back, we'll continue with this, with this thing we're saying. Uh, their viewers at home, we're talking about the state of the church. And I, 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 I think it's important the way we started, just the fact that there's so much God is doing. But there's a need to challenge ourselves in this way. We're going to take a break now. When we come back, we're going to continue from where we stopped. Please don't go away. <laughs> 